You know, guys, something which us bodybuilders here on YouTube don't talk about, or at least not as much, is the toll that competing takes on your body, both physically and psychologically, it's, it's not good. And in previous years, I gotta be honest, there were times when I put on 20, 25, even 30 pounds of, let's be honest, pretty much mostly fat in as little as one month immediately after my competition. And guys, to be honest, you know, this time around, after my most recent show two months ago, to be perfectly honest, I still look pretty fucking damn good. Oh, and by the way, I'm back in Australia. Hey guys, welcome back. That was really loud, actually. Welcome back to my channel. This is Vertrune Physique checking in once again from Gold Coast, Australia. Uh, Jordan and I actually flew out here a couple days ago, and yes, it did take like 48 hours to get here. It was like the longest travel, flight, whatever of our lives, but it's okay, we are here. And I know that some of you guys right off the bat are gonna be saying like, really, Igor? You know, you can travel anywhere in the world because you're, you know, you're fortunate in that sense to, you know, not have a nine to five job and essentially have the freedom to do whatever the fuck you want or go wherever the hell you want and you go to the exact same place you did last time. And to that I say, yeah, but screw it, we just, we just love it. Like, it's very rare to find a place which is potentially like actually your favorite place on the planet like your this one city may be my favorite individual spot on the face of the earth so in that case fuck it if i like it i like it but that's not what this video is going to be about you know me i'm not the kind of guy who's gonna do these videos where it's like what's up guys 30 minute vlog of showing off how cool and fancy i am <laughs> no i don't really like i I don't really do that, I don't really give a shit about that. What I want to talk about today is almost like a follow-up, a practical follow-up to my December video where I essentially explain to you guys that for the first time in my entire life, let alone just here on YouTube, I am not going into the, you know, the new year, 2020, with a specific goal to cut down or bulk up. I'm essentially just trying to maintain my physique. Most importantly, maintain a somewhat you know, uh, lean physique, which performs well, but also obviously looks well, all these things. And that was great, you know, I, we established the goal. How the fuck do you actually do it? That is the purpose of today's video. Like all of these different variables, you know, step by step, how am I planning on achieving this? That's what I want to talk about today. So first variable I want to talk about is actual body weight and is actually kind of give you guys a physique update of where I am looking right now. Also guys, by the way, I apologize if I keep on like switching on you in terms of my locations. I was like there, now I'm here. There's like these cute little birds which decided to sit like five feet from me to a point where they're very close but I can't actually reach them and like shoo them away. They're very cute, they're very beautiful, but they are loud as shit. You can probably hear them right now. So we uh, decided to change locations. Either way, when I competed, uh, I was pretty much like the day of my show, just un like just a hair under 170 pounds. However, that's not my real weight. That's kind of my like pruned version of myself because I'm this little deflated, dehydrated version of who I am just a week ago. A week ago, before I started the peak week with the crazy sodium and carbs and all this crazy mumbo jumbo, that would be my real weight and that was around 174 175 around there that was my true physique weight since then um i have bulked up to a grand spanking total 184 pounds on the day of the footage that you guys are seeing on screen right now and i gotta say at least in my personal opinion i know it could there are guys who are better than me there are guys who are worse than me there are guys who blow me out of the water i don't give a flying fuck I know personally for me, I'm very happy with this because in previous years, that has not been the case at all. I think the worst one ever, this was my first show, which explains why it was the worst ever. Uh, I was like 178 or so on stage, and then I got up to 200 pounds within 30 fucking days. One month, 
and I pretty much undid six, you know, five, six months of contest prep. I remember it was actually, it was, a, it was a painful learning experience. I had a music festival that I was going to that summer. It was my first ever music festival. And the timing worked out perfectly because it was honestly like three weeks after my competition. So I thought to myself, listen, I'm gonna compete. I'm gonna be tan, lean, big, shredded. I'm gonna look great. Then I'm gonna put on two or three pounds, not a big deal. And then I'm gonna get to the, uh, the music festival and I'm gonna be the most jacked guy there. I'm gonna be like fucking Z's bro. Like, ah. And I put on like 18 pounds within three weeks. And I'm like, all right, time to put on a t-shirt and sit in the corner. I'm like two pounds away from man tits. And I, yeah, that year I learned the hard way. In previous years, it's gotten better, but it's still, it has been a problem. So to be at this level, and even in my case, having been training for over half my life now uh, on YouTube and competing for like over five, six years now, this is technically a first and feels pretty good. All right, guys, next topic, calories, macros, what is going in my mouth? We are going to be talking about that. By the way, I, I know, yeah, we're jumping around all over the place. Every single scene is like a different part of my Airbnb, but this time there's a reason. It's because I gotta break out the Microsoft Excel, my precious baby. My current nutritional targets are as follows, 2,700 calories, which puts me at just around a maintenance based on what I know, based on personal experience for my body, or at the very most, that's like, like a tiny deficit depending on how energetic and how uh, active I am during the day. Did I work out? How hard did I work out? Did I run, sprint, climb? All those things can push my metabolism a little bit higher. Protein, fat, carbs are going to be 25, 25, and 50% uh, respectively of my uh, incoming calories, which works out to 170 grams, 75 grams, and 335 around there. Now, you guys might be wondering, like, okay, Igor, you just threw all this information at us. You know, what the hell are you doing? Why is your protein, you know, not as high as some other guys do? Why is your carbs kind of high? Just, don't worry, I'm gonna get through all of that. We're gonna go through it step by step. Protein intake, you guys might, some of you, I'll be honest, wondering, Igor, that's not that high. I mean, 170 grams of protein, that's not even like, that's not even your body weight. It's not even that magic one gram of protein per pound of body weight number. Like, what the hell are you doing? I know people who eat more than that who are smaller than you. They eat two, 250, you know, whatever grams of protein. And honestly, that is not my strategy. And that is absolutely not uh, not necessary for three reasons. Number one is I am no longer eating in a calorie deficit. When you are eating in a deficit, an energy deficit, your body is at a higher propensity or a higher likelihood of essentially running out of protein because it's using uh, ingested protein in your food for purposes besides just you know muscle protein synthesis and muscle retention. It's literally taking a part of that protein and burning it up for energy because it doesn't have enough energy coming in the form of other food, you know, fat and carbs, because again, calorie deficit, energy deficit is the key phrase here. And there's even a possibility, it's unfortunate and uh, you know, if, especially for natural guys, it's annoying, but it's there's even a possibility that not only is protein Protein going to be metabolized for energy that you ingest, but your actual muscle fibers can be theoretically broken down. This is a big reason why it's almost like inevitable that when natural guys uh, diet down to relatively low body fat percentages, it's in a, you know it's impossible. We are going to lose at least some. Uh, level of lean body mass at least some a little bit of muscle is unfortunately lost in the process unless you've got crazy genetics you're on steroids or you're like very new to training in which case like you just touching a weight is going to make you blow up because it's such a new stimulus for your body uh number two is because i'm not stupidly lean anymore when you are like real like very lean you know in my case you know 12 10 even less percent body fat it kind of like falls into the same uh under the same umbrella because you just you don't have enough energy you don't have enough body fat you're just this skinny shriveled up little prune version of yourself and number three is I am not on steroids. I don't know what people who are on performance enhancing drugs, anabolic steroids require from a protein standpoint, but based on some knowledge from what I've seen from guys just talking about it on like YouTube and vlogs and forums and shit, it would make sense. You know, if you're gonna put on like 10 pounds of muscle in like 12 weeks, almost like a pound of muscle a week, which is like ridiculous. It's like magic. It's, 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 it's mostly impossible for natural individuals. Yeah, that makes sense that you would probably require a little bit and by a little bit, I mean a fuck ton more protein 
uh, than someone in my scenario. Uh, next up, carbs and fats, which are kind of like two variables, but we're going to be kind of tackling them together because in this case, they're somewhat interchangeable. That's that's one thing I wanted to mention right off the bat, that if there are days when I eat more fat, maybe I went out to eat, I got a burger, fries, wings, whatever, and I got more fat, that's okay. I'm not going to be like, well... That's it, I'm fucked, might as well quit. No, it's not the end of the world. I just adjust for this by bringing my carbohydrates down. You got your protein, you got your calories, and in my case, especially because I'm not that strict, not being on a comp, you know, competition prep or anything, if your protein and carbs, you know, they're not perfect, they're not exactly aligned with your targets, it's not the end of the world, just make an adjustment. One goes up, the other one comes down. For the most part, they are somewhat interchangeable. Somewhat interchangeable being the keyword, because the last thing I want to mention about this is an interesting... It's an interesting theory, emphasis on the word theory. I actually talked about this a few years ago in my like bulking 101 video back in like, I think 2016 or 2017, but there is a theory, and that's, I want you guys to understand this before you think like, you know, you walk away from this video like, that's it, you know, the true and physique is vouching for this, this is fact, this is just written in stone. No, take it easy. But essentially, when your body ingests uh, carbohydrates, especially when it gets more than enough energy. Essentially, we're saying uh, uh, maintenance or obviously a calorie surplus, even more so. There is this theory that because your body's not that advanced or, or that adept or that efficient at taking carbohydrates, breaking them down, and then taking the additional energy, the additional food, calories that you got when you are overfeeding, calorie surplus, and taking that in, converting it essentially into fat storage. It does this uh, using a process called de novo lipogenesis, which is just like Latin or something. It's It literally translates to de novo new lipo fat genesis genesis. So it's pretty much like new way of fat uh, creation or, or generation. Your body will take carbohydrates, it'll break them down into building blocks, you know, simple sugars, you know, glucose, for example, and then it can't just take that and ingest it and put it into your uh, your adipose cells, your fat cells, because it's the wrong thing. It's like a round peg in a square hole. It, it doesn't work. What it needs to do, there's one additional step, it needs to convert it, take it, break it down using this process into free fatty acids, which can then be transported and stored in your fat cells if you have more than enough energy. And this process is not that, uh, it's not that perfect. It's not that um, efficient in your body. And the logic is that if it's not that adept, at doing this, at least not in comparison to just taking fat, which doesn't require this additional step, this conversion step, it can just take that fat, break it down, and stick it right into your fat cells. Because of that, an individual could overeat into a calorie surplus, or in my case, a maintenance, it's, it's a similar concept, but even more conservative. An individual can do that, and they are not going to put on as much body fat as if they were to eat an overeat by the same calorie surplus number, but with the majority of those calories coming from fat. This is kind of like a th kind of like one of the potential explanations for why there are so many of these like weird vegan YouTubers or fitness personalities who eat a shit ton of calories in the form of mostly carbohydrates. Again, they are vegans and they don't really seem to gain that much weight. I mean, there are chicks I've seen online who eat like three, four, five thousand calories with like 50% of it coming from just fruits, essentially, uh, you know, natural carbs. And then they're like, they still weigh like 120 pounds. And I'm like, okay, either you're running like a marathon every day, or maybe this theory has a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of backing to it. And um, again, this, this is something which I wanted to mention in this video. And I don't want to be taking, you know, be, to be this to be taken as like, okay, holy shit, new strategy. I'm just going to flip my entire nutritional approach, you know, throw it out the window and start doing this. No, take it easy. This is something which I will be honest, requires a lot more research on my end and really figure this shit out and then do one of my like 30 minute whiteboard videos on it. Uh, uh, yeah, so in that case, this overall, you know, to, uh, to, to backtrack a little bit, yeah, this is my uh, nutritional approach at the moment going forward. It's not going to be set in stone that hard. You know, if I go over, under by one, two, three hundred calories every now and then, it's going to be okay. It's not a competition prep. But at the same time, I am not completely throwing, you know, my nutritional strategy out the window saying, fuck it, YOLO, I'll just eat whatever I want and it'll all work out. For maybe the people who have like 99th percentile genetics, they can do that. In my case, not so much. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about, this one is 
uh, sort of also akin to kind of like my nutritional strategy, but it's more so practical application. We know what numbers I'm going to be aiming for generally, as I mentioned earlier in the video, but how am I actually going to do that? And most importantly, make it easy. Now, I know there's certain things like uh, you know, intermittent fasting, which I've talked about a thousand times, and that's obviously something I'm going to be implementing to a certain extent. I'm not gonna be doing something crazy like eight hour fats probably anymore, but you know, if I wake up at eight, probably not gonna have anything till lunch around, you know, like noon, give or take. But that's not what I'm referencing. This is something which I have always, I'm gonna be honest, I fuck this up every year. And every year I, I always tell myself like, listen, if you just did this, it would make your life so much simpler and it would make it so easier for you to like still, you know, eat a decent amount of food, but at the same time not turn into a fat ass, which I've done in previous years as I rebound from the competition. So when we are dieting, if you're anything like me, which again, 99% of you to a certain extent probably are, we eat foods that are, how to put this eloquently, boring as fuck. We are sitting here with our, you know, low carbohydrate fruits, our raspberries, our watermelon, our chicken breast, our vegetables, our like, you know, maybe I'll cheat later and have a rice cake, a caramel rice cake. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not that fun because obviously you're trying to eat foods that are going to fit your macros and most importantly, the very low in calorie density, the amount of calories per actual like amount of food that's going to like fill up your stomach. Now that obviously sucks. And when we're usually done dieting for, you know, in my case, it was a show for some of you guys out there, it might just be to hit a certain, you know, body weight target or summer or whatever you are doing. You know, some people email me and they're like, I want to diet down for a wedding, whatever your reasoning may be, whatever, like whatever that deadline is over and it passes, if you're anything like me, you just fucking hit the gas on eating shit. We, like, you know, finally you can eat theoretically whatever you want, I mean, you shouldn't, but you do, you do, let's be honest. And we eat crap. And I always told myself, like, Igor, you know, because you obviously you go from dieting to like, in this case, bulking up improperly. I always told myself, why do you, it's almost like two steps are taken. You eat worse food and you eat more food in quantity and obviously you put on excess body fat. But if I just took the best of both worlds, you know, I could eat more food now because I'm no longer dieting. But at the same time, I'm not gonna eat that crap food. I'm gonna continue to eat the clean food that I was eating before, you know, relatively clean. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and literally just be like broccoli, chicken, rice, that's my life. No, but like, you know, foods like, in my case, like a lot more fruit, right? You know, more carbohydrates, which I kind of cut out. Like I wasn't eating, even eating like apples and bananas because, oh shit, 25 grams of carbs, you know, in a banana when I was dieting. You can reintroduce that. For me, things like like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Uh, you know those little like uh, arrowroot chocolate, you know, digestive biscuits? For me, those, I kind of referenced them in a video a few months ago. I'm gonna have the, the digestive chocolate biscuits, which still taste fantastic, as opposed to eating two rolls of, uh, you know, or Oreos or some shit. Oh, I really want like my coffee and donut in the mornings, you know, for work. Can I still do that? Absolutely. Go and get yourself in, in you know, for us in Canada, we have this place called Tim Hortons. That's kind of like our, our Dunkin' Donuts of Canada. And I'll get like a 200 calorie, you know, chocolate dip donut, as opposed to getting like two, 300 calorie, like fat ass, whatever the hell that thing is called. Right, like you can still live your life normally and eat good foods that taste great that aren't that clean, like donuts and chocolate and all of these things. Just don't go crazy. And I do oversimplify it a little bit. I'm just saying like, why don't you just stop eating this shit? There are other things involved. For example, a big one, which I've talked about in the past, is uh, on a hormonal level. You guys know the, the hormone leptin, which I've talked about a few times. It's responsible for signal, signaling to your body that you're full. Some people call it the, the satiety uh, hormone. This one is severely uh, you know, decreased. Uh, in terms of its excretion when you are dieted down because it's actually synthesized by fat cells. Well, if you have less body fat because you've dieted down to like 12, 10, 8% body fat or whatever, you're going to have more of that. That's a big reason why when we're, when we're dieting down and very lean, we're just fucking starving. It's not just in your head, it's literally in your body on a physiological hormonal level. You are, your body's just like, please for God's sakes, eat something. That hormone, you know, imbalance, you can kind of call it, you know, the low levels of leptin, that's not gonna fix immediately. That takes weeks or in some case months uh, to actually bounce back. That's why a lot of us, when we're done dieting, we're starving and eating everything like in sight for the first few weeks. And then after a month or so, 
that's when kind of like the diet brain goes away and you get back to normal. And that's why it's very important to kind of resist this as much as possible for a few weeks as you start to ramp up your calories. Leptin levels come back up. Your hunger levels normalize. I mean, you're not going to be like, that's it, it's gone. But you're not going to be crazy anymore like you were when you were eating like 1,800 calories and dieting down to like 10% body fat or whatever your target may be. And when that happens, now you can do this strategy. And it took me a while to get there. I, I will admit, like especially that first one or two weeks after my competition, you guys remember from my competition video when I was uh, on vacation in Aruba, I was just eating everything in sight. And I did gain, that's pretty much where I gained the majority of like the eight or nine pounds that I gained since my competition. Pretty much like over 50% of that was gained in that one week alone as I was transferring out of this crazy diet brain. But when I did, and I have, after that first month or so, I have been able to implement this strategy. And that's a big reason why I still, you know, I'm not shredded by any means, but I do think I am lean. Lean, but not shredded. It's kind of like the precursor to actually getting shredded. And that's why I think I'm very happy with the first time in like five years, I haven't ballooned and gained like 20 pounds in the first, you know, few months after a show. I'm eating the same diet foods I did a few months ago. I'm just eating a lot more of it and that way I get the best of both worlds. I know, it seems very simple and it seems almost like, Igor, why do you even have to tell it to us? Isn't it intuitive? And the answer is, for some people, yeah. But for me in previous years, and maybe a lot of you guys out there, maybe not. <laughs>